who's ready for a romance story? Romance when it comes to startups. That sounds fantastic as young female entrepreneurs, right? So tonight we have Toria Blanchard. She's the founder of Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes out of Detroit. And she started this company a few years ago and has had tremendous success. She's been the poster child for being a young entrepreneur in Detroit. So we're thrilled to have her on the show. She's going to be on for 30 minutes with us. Use the hashtag YFE chat. Tweet your takeaways and meet your fo- your fellow young female entrepreneurs. Welcome to YFE Chat Live, the live show that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern here on YFELive.com. I'm your host tonight, Jennifer Dono. This show is 30 minutes. Like I said before, use the hashtag YFE Chat to connect with your fellow young female entrepreneurs and tweet your takeaways. Our guest tonight is Toria Blanchard. Like I was saying, she's the founder of Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes. She's going to be on to talk about what it takes to start a restaurant, what it's like to build a business in Detroit, and all of the fun things in between that what it, that's what it means to be a young female entrepreneur. So it's going to be a really cool show. Tonight's episode is episode 84, and it's brought to you by Ovali TV. Ovali believes in building community through shared experiences. We produce professional live webcasts that bring tribes together. And by MailChimp. MailChimp is the best way to design, send, and share email newsletters. You can get started today for free at MailChimp.com. So don't sign, don't forget to sign up for Mailed It. It's yfe.me forward slash Mailed It. That's the way to stay in the loop with everything YFE. We have in-person meetups around the U.S., so it's always a great way to meet other young women in your area, and we do a lot of these live webcasts. So before I bring Toria in, I wanted to just do a couple little pieces. Uh, YFE's action calendar, uh, we do an action every Friday now through this month, and t- tomorrow's challenge is to start your day off on the right foot by eating a healthy breakfast. And this was the action submitted by Melissa Penton. Very excited to do that. So you can find out more at yfe.me forward slash action calendar. And then another thing YFE is currently doing is our Bootstrap Book Club. There's about 470 plus women that are in this club. And we're all reading the Thank You Economy. Our host is at the Stacey Harris, and she's doing a fantastic job. Let's see if we can bring her in. She's going to feature two bootstrappers that answered question five. Question five was a really good one, too. So let's bring Stacey in. Stacey, so you have two people you want to feature tonight. I do have two people I want to feature tonight. And one of them is with us, which I'm always excited about when I feature somebody who's actually in the chat. I don't know why. I I know who it is, too, and I love her. I love her magazine. It's so cute. Yeah, we'll start with her since we're, like, talking about her now and she doesn't know who she is, and that's got to be awkward. (laughs) It's Lauren from La Petite Fashionista. Um, She has got really great comments, and it was super exciting to hear her perspective as a blogger and talking about representing herself authentically in her blog and her social media. So it was really, really cool. Um, And then also Chandra Russell, um, who is a social media person out of Savannah. She was the book club before. Chandra is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she she had a really good perspective because she was talking about um, using social media as part of her networking in some place where social media is not particularly well embraced yet, where she's from in Savannah. Um, So that was kind of an interesting perspective because that's not something we have here. In Phoenix, we have, you know, like Infusionsoft and GoDaddy are like based here. So it's kind of a tech town. Um, So most events have a hashtag and stuff. So it was cool to kind of read that. Um, But yeah, definitely join us for the next question comes out Saturday. So join us if you're not there already. All the past questions are still there. There's really good networking in the group. Um, And we have like, I want to say half the book left, half half the six questions left, right? Seven? Yeah. There's uh, 12 questions in total for this. We go through the beginning yeah. of November, so you still have plenty of time to jump in the book. Yeah, so totally jump in. And it's an easy read, um, and all of the questions are framed so you can answer them even if you don't want to read the book. Um, but you should read the book because it's good. Um, so definitely join us either way because it's a really cool way to network. And if you're here, then you obviously understand the importance of networking. Right. Nice. So um, everyone can join us at yfe.me forward slash find me in the club is the link. Um, it always makes me smile when you say that. Right? I thought so. Because you say it all, find me in the club. 
<laughs> I love it. Mm, silly. All right. Well, Stacy, we'll bring you in at the end of the show. Everyone, Stacy, make sure that you tweet her. We're using the hashtag YFE chat. Yep. Thank you, Stacy. Bye, guys. All right. So let's talk about our guest, Toria Blanchard. She's the founder of Good Girls Go to Paris Crepes out of Detroit. Toria Blanchard is a 33 year old Detroit native who moved to Paris in 1998 as an au pair to look after two children. After years, she moved back to the U.S. and obtained a degree in French from Wayne State University and landed a job as a French teacher at Consort. Consortium High School, a Detroit charter school. Toria taught for five years before pursuing her dream to open a crepery in Detroit. So, Toria, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, everyone that's watching, we do have Toria on the phone line. This lady is crazy busy. So, I met her a couple ah. years ago in D.C., a few years ago, actually, now. Toria, I don't know if you remember me at all, but you definitely have a very strong point in my mind as being someone that was really unique. Ah. Um, but at the time, you were opening, I think, a second location. Yeah, I, actually, I opened up a bar restaurant called Rodin. And it's in the same building. It's right next door to the Detroit Institute of Arts. So that's been open for about eight months now. It's a French-inspired American small plate um, restaurant bar. Yeah. So that's so, been going on. It, so Toria uh, is traveling right now. So we have her on the phone. But we'll show some images um, over the screen so you guys can get an idea of who she is and what she does. Um, but I was going through your Facebook page today, and I was... <laughs> Tomorrow morning, I'm making crepes. That's all I'm going to say. It was. It looks so good. Um, so as far as you starting uh, Good Girls Go to Paris crepes, um, mm -hmm. what exactly, because this is, all right, this is why I remember you. Uh, starting a restaurant today is really, really hard to begin with. I mean, you go to a banker and ask for a loan, and it's almost impossible to get funded that way. Uh, so you really do have to bootstrap in the initial when you get started to prove that it's, uh, you know, it's a good concept there. How did you fund Good Girls Go to Crepes? Or Good go, go Girls Alrighty. Go to Paris Crepes? No, that, that's, yeah. Uh, when I first got started, I I was a French teacher, and I just said, you know, I really want to, I, I love teaching French, and I love the kids, but I was like, I really want to do what I'm passionate about, and that was making crepes and collecting vintage film posters. So the hardest thing about doing a startup is getting the funds. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to go to a bank, no matter what your credit looks like, no matter what you're doing. Banks don't, start up, uh, don't fund startups. So I just had to, you know, take a little work and get some cash. I, and I wouldn't recommend this for everyone. This is just what I did. I cashed out my 401k. I opened up um, a 48 square foot stand downtown Detroit. And then I opened up another, um, I closed that down, and I opened up the, the sit-down location of that restaurant, uh, which was 1,000 square feet, and then I, I expanded to 2,000 square feet in 2010. And from 2010 until uh, 2012, I was working at Rodin, which is a French uh, bar restaurant. But, uh, yep. So, I don't know, it just kind of, you know, went from there, you know, you just, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, it's so, it's, every time I tell a story, it's like hard to explain how I did it, um, but it's like, you know, you just believe in something to the point where you stop at nothing to get it open, and that's how it got open, that's how it started. I think that's great. Okay, so the for everyone that's listening, I spoke on a panel with her, and somebody in the audience asked her, how did you fund your business, and or something like that, and you said, I cashed in my 401k, and the entire audience literally gasped. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, right. you were just like, what? <laughs> um, Everyone in the audience, I didn't, I, oops, sorry, I didn't know that, uh, well, again, you know, I, I can't recommend that for everyone. But for me, for what I was doing, um, I, you know, it just worked out for myself. Everyone has their own path. Maybe someone has, like, a rich uncle that just wants to invest in their business, or maybe someone has, like, a windfall from whatever or whatever. But I think, you know, it was interesting you bring that up. The one gentleman, he was, um, I, I, I think it was like, you know, this is not for the weak at heart, you know, if you want to open up a business. You have to believe in what you're doing 100%. And believing in what you're doing 100%, if you have no other ways of getting the cash, 
you you're gonna uh, you know uh, cash out your four hundred one k. That's it. I mean, I know. And well, it's funny. It, it said that you say that it's not for the weak at heart. I mean, our the panel that I was on, it was one, there was one other person that was from Detroit, and that was kind of a main feature because Detroit was going through a lot in the news at that time. And since then, right. it's got it's gone through much more, of course. Um, but it it you do you definitely have this. Like I said at the beginning, you have kind of a poster child image almost in Detroit of what it takes to be a young entrepreneur. And your story is something that's been told a number of times in the media um, mm -hmm. in Detroit. The other, the, the other person that was on the panel was Josh Linkner, who does, um, he's a, a big name in Detroit. He does uh, cash, uh, with um, development of like internet, uh, well, like um, uh, capital. Uh, yeah, he's venture a venture capital. capitalist. That's what he does. Yeah. Voila. I mean, I'm just a, you know, a mom and pop shop when you think about it, you know, I'm just a crepe shop or a restaurant, whatever. But I think that, you know, I represent a lot of, of what people are trying to do if they're trying to open up a restaurant, try to open up a retail of what I personally did to do my business. I mean, again, it's not for everyone. And I don't, you know, I mean, I cash up my 401k and maxed out an American Express card, you know. It's like I did what I had to do to get open and to get started because I believed in what I was doing to the point of, you know, there's no return. If it, if it failed, it failed, you know. I, I would just go start back to, to, I would just teach again. Yeah, but, um, there's no training back for you. But since you mentioned the, the teaching piece, um, you were a teacher before that. I mean, as far as mm -hmm. creperies go, did you take any, how did you learn to put together a menu and to make, Crepes and all that fun stuff. Um, I, can I get my phone for Um, how did I put all that together? Again, it was just like this little voice that was telling me to to open up. You know, like I, again, when I first opened up the crepe shop, my mother, my father, everyone thought I was nuts. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I I I I turned down this job. You know, I was working as a teacher for five years, and um, giving up my four hundred one k, giving up my insurance, giving up my Giving up my buy monthly checks for the unknown. And I don't know. I, I just said, you know, I, I used to work at a tea shop, I, and I, I put together all the menu based on like uh, what my favorite foods were, and just knew this had to work. I knew I had to do this, and it was just this innate. I can't even describe it. That of what how it all came together. It sounds crazy. It sounds crazy when I think about it, but it's just. You know, I was like, I know I needed a menu. I know I needed X, Y, and Z. There was nobody to tell me how to start a crepe restaurant. And you had no prior experience as far as working in a crepery. You said you worked at a tea shop. Oh, no, like absolutely not. You know, I just um, watched them being made, and I just said, wow, that looks, you know, that's magical. I was, when I was 16 years old, I lived in, um, you know, when I was 16 years old, I visited Paris. When I was 20 to 21, I lived in Paris. I just watched them make crepes on the street, and... To me, it was magical. I just said, I, I, I love that. And I, I started making crisps at home. It was a little different. And then it was so funny, like the few days before I opened, I was like, how do you do the crisps again? And I went on YouTube. That's how it got. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. And that's how it all got started. There was no, there was no plan. There was no person to tell me how to do it. I just like listened to my gut and I said, this is going to work. This is going to happen. You know, I think and that's so is... funny that you say that because I, you know, I, I know your background, but anyone else that would walk into your shop, I mean, you've been written up, like I was saying, in countless publications. You are a best of type of a restaurant. I mean, people, we got tweets today of people that no longer live in Detroit, but said, uh, you know, when I lived in Detroit, I always went there and that they missed your crepes. And so it's just so funny oh that gosh. you you had no, I mean, I think the idea that hits home with me is that you don't have to go necessarily go to school. You don't necessarily have to do anything um, as far as certification you know goes. It, it's so funny you touch on that. It's like, all right, I went to, I was speaking at the, uh, so bad, but I was speaking at the Ross School of Business at U of M. And one gentleman asked me, um, how you know he wanted to open up a bowling alley? And I think I told this story a million times, but he said, "What do I need to do to open up a bowling alley?" And I told him, "You probably need to drop out of the Ross School of Business at U of M, take that cash, and open up a bowling alley. That's a million dollar bowling alley that you wanted to open up in the beginning. You start small. You open up the mom and pop bowling alley. It was great. 
and you work really hard, and then you grow from there. You can't, I, I say to everyone who wants to do whatever they want to do, start small, as small as you possibly can go, then build from there. Because it's, it's it, it, trust me, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I've had um, I misfire, you know, like I, I opened up a, a, a deli space in Southfield, Michigan that didn't quite work because I, didn't, I had no experience and I wasn't passionate about that. Um, even with Rodan, um, the, the bar restaurant, I have no experience with like opening up a, a bar, but I had to learn, you know, I had to learn different things. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, you know, it's not always going to be this. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I definitely say go with your gut instinct, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I, I went with my gut instinct to the point where I just set my life up so that the crib shop would work. I, I'm, you know, I wasn't uh, was I married? Yeah, I was married at the time. I don't have any children. This is my baby. You know, it's like I live and breathe good girls. This is what I do, and. Um, well, well, and I, mean, I, you know, there's a couple. So we talked to someone last week in Baltimore, and I feel like your stories are very parallel in that she is the same way. You know, she had no experience. She just loved vintage clothes, and she was going to start small. She mm-hmm. opened up a store in a bus, and it's. I mean, people love her. The same thing that is true that I said of you that happened to her. You know, people on social media connected with us and said, "Oh my gosh, I love her," and she's become a staple within the community too, which I just think is, is really interesting. Is it the double decker bus? No, she has like no, a she has a like a cute little school bus. I mean, it's a small I little school bus. It, I, I think I know what, it, and then she redid the floors, and uh, yeah, I think I know about this. That's funny. Huh. <laughs> well, she's really, really, um, really sweet and very funny and very accomplished. So it's just it's funny to see the two parallels. So uh, we have YFE intern Vanita Aspen. Um, if you guys are on Twitter, you can find her at Vanita Aspen. We're gonna bring her in in just a second. She's gonna ask you a couple questions because she's. A young female entrepreneur, aspiring young female entrepreneur who's interested in starting out a restaurant. Before we bring Vanita in, though, I wanted to ask you about how important social media is as far as owning a restaurant goes. Because like I mentioned, people connected with us on Twitter saying how much they love you. Yet, you don't really have a Twitter uh, presence. I found people on Instagram talking about you. Yet again, you don't really have an Instagram presence. So how important is that to you as far as getting people in the door? Well, I'll say this, you know, I'm 35 years old. I'm kind of on the old end of the whole social media thing. I really take to Twitter. Um, personally, I have a, a Pinterest page. I don't know. I, I was just uh, saying this to my manager the other day that I need to do a Pinterest, an Instagram, and a Twitter for good girls. I know I don't. I really keep up with uh, the Facebook for good girls, but not, I don't know. I, I just, and, uh, on Facebook, I have about... Was I think it's seven thousand one hundred something fans, but I haven't really gotten into Instagram for I mean even personally. But I think it would really um, you know hit a lot of people that haven't already hit with you know obviously Facebook or just word of mouth or whatever like that. I just haven't gotten around to it. I don't know. I, I you know I guess I would have to you know take pictures constantly, and I do take pictures for good girls like whenever. We're, we get a, a six pound power gloves and it's tell ha ha, we're going to take a picture for it on Facebook. I guess I could do that for Instagram as well. I would highly recommend, you know, I guess I would say, you know, I would highly recommend for anyone starting out to, you know, not be like an old, spooky like me, like that doesn't get into Instagram. Do the Instagram, do the Twitter, and also do Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I thought it's very relaxing, actually. It's like mental knitting. So, uh. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, it's same thing with last week. She didn't have a whole big, you know, social media profile. But what she did was have a quality experience that was unique and memorable. And I think everything about your um, your shops are very much you and very much a unique experience and something that is something people want to share. And I think that's, you know, no matter how many profiles we set up, if you don't have that something that someone's going to want to share or tell their friends they're doing, it, it's not going right. to matter. So um, I want to bring I, I, I in... Think it's, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I, think it's, I think it's very good to do the Instagram, uh, Twitter, everything like that. But sometimes people can get a little fatigued. You know, like I see some certain pages... They're posting about everything. I think that um, as a consumer as well, like I think once a day, take your time. I think in the early afternoon, maybe three or four o'clock in the afternoon, everybody's kind of looking to get off work, whatever. Like they're looking on their um, 
on the internet. I think that's a good time to do that, but um, sometimes people do it a little bit too much, and I find myself unliking certain certain pages of things I actually really like. You know, it's like, okay, great, you're doing this, you're doing that. Okay, it's like it's like overkill. It's like I think that's I a great point a as far as quality goes. I do the same thing. I've had to unlike a couple of things recently where I feel really bad because I like the brand, but at the same time. I'm just like, I don't really understand what you're trying to talk about here. So, <laughs> but right, so anyway, I want to bring Vanita Aspen in. Again, you can tweet her at, at Vanita Aspen. Uh, Vanita, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hopefully, Vanita can hear me. <laughs> yeah, okay, she's on. Uh, yeah, so, Vanita, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let you talk to Toria. Um, you have a couple questions that you prepared for her as far as um, being a restaurant owner. So, go ahead. Yes. So, first question. Um, being that you don't have any experience, do you, well, you didn't have experience prior to starting your restaurant, do you feel more pressure to do better because of that? Or do you just feel that the amount of pressure that you're under is the same for anybody else with the restaurant? Okay, I, I think your question was, um, because I didn't have any experience with business, did I feel more pressure to do what? What was your question? To, was do, less part of it? to do better or to do perform well. No, I'll tell you what, in my mind, this is my passion. Just like I'm sure the, the, the person that does that vintage bus, you know, it, we're doing things that we are absolutely passionate about. With Rodan, with Good Girls, I'm passionate about um, crepes. I mean, I love it. I, I, when I ever go into the shop, I tell the crepe maker, I was like, get off the crepe maker. I would have, not get off, but you know, it's like, all the crepes, and they're like, oh God. I just like doing it. I'm passionate about it. And I, I think, you know, a lack of experience, you know, you know, I, you know, no, I, I did not go to school for business. I didn't go to school for X, Y, and Z, but I did, I did use a lot of my life experiences. I did go to school to become a French teacher. I did live in France. I, you know, I collect vintage film posters. I have a love of film. I have a love of French new wave films. I just take everything that is a passion in my life and I incorporate it into my work. That's what I do. So I didn't feel any pressure. I mean, you know, if you feel the, the, the idea of the, the idea of pressure, pressure from food, pressure from, you know, you have to make sure that, it, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think the best thing to do is to stay the course, stay true to yourself. And then just, you know, it's not just some patty on the back, like, oh, you know, raw, raw stuff. This is, this is what it is. You have to, you know, um, believe in what you're doing to the point of, I don't know, that there is no pressure. I, I don't feel pressure from other people. I feel like I need to deliver a nice quality product. And that's the pressure that I'm under. And, to make sure that I'm having fun and I'm enjoying life and I'm doing what pleases me, really. If that, if that makes any sense. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my next question is going to be, do you have any other goals in life? Kind of just how you kind of jumped into making crepes. Is there something else you just want to jump into and kind of make yourself mainstream or do you just want to keep the crepe business that you have? Oh, so your question is, do I have other goals that I want to do other things? Was that the question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I did the, the restaurant bar thing, which was very, very new to me. Um, but again, I'm, I think I'm a different kind of soul than most people, you know. I everything that I'm absolutely passionate about, I seek it out and I do it. If I, whether it be travel, whether it be collecting posters, whether it be making crepes, <laughs> excuse me, I think life is too short for us to not do what we are passionate about. I think a lot of people do not do what they're, they're passionate about because we have to, oh, let, me, let me back it up even more. I don't know, most people, I'm sure most people have seen the movie Fight Club, right? That movie inspired me a lot when it came to opening up of a crepe restaurant. I said, I said, this is my life right here, right now, right the second, and it's passing by. Yeah, I'm doing what I want to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable. But am I really living my life? And I said to myself, no. So that's why all the 
uh, all that other stuff just faded away. Like, you know, I got to keep up. Uh, I have to, oh, I have to buy that house and uh, whatever, whatever. No. I have to I have to dress a certain way. No. I, I, oh, I can't travel. I have to have kids. And, and you know, no. I'm going to do exactly what the Toria plan is, which is to enjoy, uh, which is to do what I feel passionate about and, as long as it doesn't hurt other people. That's what I'm going to do, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and I think that whether you go into business, whether you, whatever you do in life, you better be passionate about what you're doing. Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point? We are one person out of billions of people. Do what you're passionate about. And if they don't fail, so what? Start back and do something else, you know? And there it is. Why I not? love it. Vanita, oh, thank, thank you so much for bringing your questions to Toria. You did awesome. Thank you. All right. So, again, you guys can follow Vanita at Vanita Aspen. She's fantastic. Highly recommend that you follow her. I love her. So, um, let's finish up with Toria. Toria, I have feature five questions, five quick questions. Uh, fast questions to ask you about who you are as a person and also your business. So, first question, what does your work environment look like? Huh. It's very warm, very inviting, big posters, red walls. feels very warm. feels like, I don't know, it's a good girl feels like me as a young woman and Rodan, the bar restaurant, feels like me right now. You know, kind of, I don't know, edgy, sexy, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, who are your female role models or mentors in business, if you have any? Female role models in business. Oh, well, my uh, my lawyer <laughs> <laughs> and my accountant, and I don't really have, I don't really have a female role model in business, but I do have female role models that I look to about. Um, uh, it sounds silly, but I, I don't know. I think the women in, like, French Nouveau films, like the Anna Karina, uh, I like uh, Kate Moss. <laughs> I think that, <laughs> excuse me, I feel like that sounds, um, she's doing what the heck she wants to do. Now she's an uh, editor at British Oh, great. You know, it's like, I, I look to, you know, yeah, she's had problems at X, Y, and Z, but, she, you know, never explain, never complain, and she gets through, and she has a sellout thing at Topshop with her brand, so I really look up to her. That's good. You so. know, I like that you keep your mentors, too, in the family with the accountant and the lawyer, and that you have role models that are outside of your industry or outside of business, too. I think that's great. So what is your advice for young female entrepreneurs who are just starting out? Young female entrepreneurs, um, I say... Whatever you are doing, a make sure that you are very passionate about it, and don't be afraid to fail. You know, I mean, my mother, father, friends, job, everyone said this crepe shop is not going to work. What are you doing? You can't be afraid of that. You can't be afraid of the unknown. And if it doesn't work out, tweak it, or you know, you know, just but stay true to yourself and stay true to what you want to do. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think that's the overarching theme of tonight's talk is um, do what you want to do. Do it now. (laughs) So uh, what do you do outside of business then? You mentioned travel quickly. You know, right now I'm in Philadelphia. I love Philly. It's a very friendly town. I'm here with my husband on uh, his business trip. But uh, I just like to uh, go to museums. I I like to travel. I like to collect vintage clothes. That's probably why I heard about your past guest. Um, and I just like to throw, I like to throw parties back at home. Nice. <laughs> and I like to enjoy life. So That's on nice. the party um, note then, what is your favorite drink of choice? My favorite drink of choice? Ooh, at Rodin, there is a drink called the Camille, which is uh, Saint-Germain gin, uh, gosh, why am I saying green chartreuse and fresh lemon juice? I love it. Mm, that sounds good. Is, is that, is a, you said favorite drink, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So that's <laughs> the Camille. It's my favorite drink. Very nice. So is there anything that's happening with Good Girls Go to Paris in the future? As, are you opening another shop or anything? Or is it just, you know, cruising along? Oh, uh, with Good Girls, I do I like to do a shop downtown. 
and then it's I'm talking about that doing a shop uh, a little get back to my roots downtown Detroit was like a little mini shop down there um, we switched over to table service uh, just trying to think of little things you, you always have to tweak it <laughs> excuse me just to make it make sure you know you know, everything stays cool for what the customers want and there it is uh, I like it and so, Toria, where can everyone find you after this online? Since you're not very many places, but where you are, it's high-quality stuff. Okay. They can find me at, uh, at the Park Shelton, right next door to the Detroit Institute of Art. Hey, good girls. Uh, we're open seven days a week. Uh, they can find me at Rodan, which is also right next door to the Detroit Institute Wait, of Art. Wait, did you say seven days a week? Yes, we're open seven days a week. <laughs> we, are, uh, we, uh, we weren't open on Mondays, uh, but now we're open seven days a week. Um, that's crazy. And at Rodan, uh, that is open six days a week. We're not open on Mondays at Rodan. Also located right next door to the DIA. And they can also find me on uh, uh, Facebook and Pinterest. Just look me up under uh, Toria Schoeniger, S-C-H-O-N, excuse me, S-C-H-O-E-N-I-G-R. That's my very last name. I just kept I just keep blanching just to keep everything I'm not confused you know so that's well Toria I want to thank you so much for being on because I know that you're really busy and you're traveling and everything I really appreciate you coming on YFE Chat Live and sharing your story with us thank you so much for having me really thank you and good luck to everyone and just stay true to your dreams and keep in mind you know we only live once you know so just do what you're passionate for I like it all right. Well, thank you so much, Toria, and safe travels and have a fun time in Philly. Thanks so much. Bye, you guys. Right, bye. So we've been talking with Toria Blanchard of Good Girls Go to Paris at Crepes in Detroit. And like I said, I met her a few years ago, and she's someone that I've always kind of had in the back of my mind as someone I want to introduce to you on YFE Chat Live. I think what she said, you know, the big overarching thing for me tonight is that uh, – you. <laughs> We have one life and we need to do what we love right now. And I feel like a lot of us put excuses in the way, you know, like, oh, what am I going to, what about money or what about my health insurance or whatever it is. And she kind of just like threw it all to the wind and was like, I'm going to do it. And it, you know, thankfully it worked out for her. I know for a lot of people that's not the case though. I've met people where their businesses have recently folded and it is, you know, even with investors, it's very sad. So I just, I like to keep that as the optimistic piece in the background. So before we leave, I wanted to bring Stacy Harris back on. Um, oh, and Vanita, let's bring Stacy and Vanita on since they're both on the show. Ladies, thank you so much for being on tonight. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it so much from tonight. I have used that word too many times. <laughs> you can never use the word appreciate too many times. <laughs> oh, good. But thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate being here, and I appreciate everyone chatting with me a little longer than normal. I know, right? Thank you, Stacey. I'm sure I wear having... on you. <laughs> no, everyone loves Stacy. So, Stacy, did you have any overarching theme for yourself of what you were taking away from uh, Toria? I agree with what you said, it, you know, following your passion. I kind of blogged about authenticity today on the website, and it's that same sort of thing, is following your path and being yourself and not trying to copy someone else's blueprint. Um, and I, I think that success comes from that because it's it's more real and because when you're passionate about something and you're that into it, like, you hustle a little harder. You know what yeah. I mean? It's funny that you said that, too, because I did. I saw that on your Facebook page, your before and after shots of you. I think yep. you're a great reminder of that you should. And I think Jules said something about this in the Bootstrap Book Club about, you know, being your own authentic self and using that to form your company culture and how important that Definitely. is for a foundation. So, Vanita, uh, good job asking questions, too. It's tough to do that live. It's a little nerve-wracking, especially when you can't see the person. So, right. um, <laughs> did you have anything that you took away from from Toria today? I took away from that. Don't expect or don't do what others expect of you. Do what you expect of yourself. So, basically, do what makes you happy is what I took from that. Nice. I like it. Well, um, thank you both for being on tonight with me. Uh, where can, Vanita, where can we find you online? Because you also have a blog, too. Yeah, um, I have a website, which is VanitaAspen.com, and I am on Twitter and Instagram, both at Vanita Aspen. Woo! Yay, Vanita. Thank you so much for being with us. And Stacy, where can everyone find you? 
You guys can find me at the Stacy Harris and at the Stacy Harris.com. It was super exciting to see the YFE intern. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that she's like a person and we got to hear she's from a you. Real and like, Bye. she's not just a big man of Jen's imagination or anything. It's very cool. I was excited <laughs> to see you. Nice. <laughs> All right, ladies, thank you so much for being on with us. Um, we'll definitely, hopefully everyone will connect with you after the show. This has been Jennifer Dono. I'm at Jennifer Dono on Twitter. Tweet me. Um, you can email us at support at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com and we'll get back to you within, I don't know, maybe a week. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be much better about responding to everyone. There's so many awesome requests. I really am trying hard. If you're waiting for an email from me, just wait, just hang tight for just a little bit longer and I'll email you back. Um, again, Tori was a fantastic guest. I hope you all connect with her afterwards. Sign up for YFE's mailing list at yfe.me forward slash mailed it. Um, it's just a great way to stay in the loop. And that's one of the only real places that we're writing now where it's actual storytelling. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much. Have a great night and we'll see you back here. Oh, my gosh, before I forget, next Thursday, Erin Condren of theerincondren.com. I shouldn't say theerincondren.com because it's just erincondren.com, but the Erin Condren, the founder, is on with us, YFE Chat Live, next week. She's a mompreneur. She's kind of like the the staple mompreneur. That's who you think of when you're a mom and an entrepreneur. She's amazing. She was just on the Today Show. She's going to be on next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. Make sure you share with your friends and hopefully you'll show up. I'm very excited about that. So anyway, this has been Jennifer Dono with Young Female Entrepreneurs, YFE Chat Live, episode 84. Hope to see you back here next week. Thank you so much.